Well, hello aviation lovers and welcome back to the VFP channel. A special video today because I received a request. Can you show me how you program the FMC or flight management computer? Of course I can, so here it is. If you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comments. Enjoy this one! Today you can follow me while I program the FMC for our return flight from Hugada in Egypt back to Amsterdam. If you want to see my landing at Hugada, click in the right hand top corner. There's a lot of explaining to do, so there are no captions or subtitles today. It's just too much work. The FMC or flight management computer on a Boeing 737 is the brain of the aircraft's navigation and performance systems. It helps us plan and execute the flight by managing the route, speeds and altitudes. Using a database of waypoints, airways and procedures, the FMC guides the plane through every phase of flight, takeoff, cruise and landing. Connected to the autopilot, it provides lateral and vertical navigation, LNAV and VNAV, for smooth and efficient flying. We interact with it through a simple interface called the CDU or Control Display Unit, making adjustments and tracking progress. In short, the FMC simplifies flying and optimizes performance for a safe, fuel-efficient journey. I always start on the IDENT page. There I check the engine rating 27K, the version U14 and the active database. There are always two databases in the computer, each covering 28 days. At the time of filming, the active database was still current, so we're good to go. Next step is to enter the ICAO code for the departure airport. Today that's Hotel Echo Golf November for Hugada. Over to the route page. The departure airport is now transferred and I can enter the arrival airports. Echo Hotel Alpha Mike for Amsterdam Schiphol. Via ACARS I can request a flight plan. I do that by entering the IADA codes for the departure and arrival airports on the REF company route line and enter our flight number Tango Romeo Alpha 5225. It takes a while for Arcus to respond, but there it is. The whole flight can now be loaded and activated. I still need to enter the departure for today, which is found on my flight plan on the iPad. We depart from runway 34 right and the departure is the Botex 1 Bravo. I continue with the performance, partially loaded by Arcars. Reserve stands for the reserve fuel, today that's 2300 kilograms. It's time now for the performance calculations. Oh, <laughs> hello! Calculations made on the iPad. Not sure if I can show you all the passenger numbers, so I blurt that out. In the FMC, I fill in the zero fuel weight, so the weight of the empty aircraft with passengers, luggage and crew. The FMC knows the total amount of fuel for this flight from the fuel totalizer, and that's how we get the takeoff weight for today. Let's enter the most forward center of gravity. By entering the CG here, we get a more accurate maximum flight level. That's why I always enter the slightly lower CG, so we have some extra margin. Next page is the N1 limit page. The outside air temperature comes from the Aduro computer. Now it's time for the takeoff performance. Therefore, we need the departure runway and the latest weather info. It's all about margin, so I enter less headwind than the actual wind. The temperature and pressure is the same as on the ATIS, and of course, no icing conditions today. We can now find the cell temp, select the temperature or assume temperature for flexible takeoff thrust settings. By using a higher temperature than the actual outside air temperature, the FMC calculates a reduced engine thrust setting. We are basically fooling the engine by telling them that it's 65 degrees outside, so they can't deliver full power. This method extends the engine life and saves fuel while still providing enough power for a safe takeoff. On the takeoff ref page, I enter the flap setting, usually 5. The actual CG and the speeds V1, rotate, and V2. V2 is also the speed I set on the autopilot panel. 
On page 2, I enter or check the acceleration height. This is the height where we accelerate and move the flaps up. We need the flaps for takeoff, but the sooner the flaps are up, the less noise we make. I now set the engine out acceleration altitude on my primary flight display and also check the local q and setting. Time to cross check the departure route. The Podix departure takes us to the west towards the high terrain. On the legs page via the route data tab I can now request the winds at our cruising altitude. Again this is provided via ACARS. While ACARS does its magic I looked up the OptiClimb speeds. OptiClimb is a performance optimization tool designed to reduce fuel consumption during climb. Using real-time aircraft data and weather forecasts, it calculates the most efficient climb profile tailored to the specific aircraft and conditions. This helps us save costs, lower emissions and improve operational efficiency. Back to the legs page to enter the actual cruise wind. Also the descent winds are loaded, with this step the FMC is loaded and we're ready for the flight. During the flight we lose weight because we're burning fuel. Less weight means we can climb. After climbing, we request the cruise winds for the new altitudes. We're now approaching Amsterdam, so we can start the preparations for the landing. When we look outside, we can see that there is a lot of fog in the area. That means that we have to prepare our CAT-3 approach on order land. On the FMC, that doesn't make any difference. The Norco arrival, RTIP transition, followed by the ILS for runway 18 right. I now check the routing via the legs page and the navigation display. As you can see, the routing has some extra turns and a discontinuity, so let's clear this up. It's still early in the evening, so we don't have to fly a night transition. I'm creating a point 15 miles prior to Papalima, the Schiphol VOR. Followed by a point east the beam, PEVOS. Connect everything together and now this is a more logical route. In the descent forecast page I enter the transition level and the local Q&H. The cut one baro minimums are still set, although we are planning an order land. The minimum altitude we use for this approach is only 50 feet, about 17 meters, above the runway. It's set and measured with the radio altimeter. Since this is a very low altitude, we have to make an order land. The order breaks at 2 and the course selector is set to the final approach course. I choose a flaps 30 landing tonight. We are now all set for the approach. Want to see the whole approach and landing in these fucking conditions? That's the next video, so stay tuned to my channel, because next week I'll have this order land for you. What did you think of this uh, behind the scenes explainer video? Please let me know in the comments. That's also the place if you have any questions or suggestions. If you like the Vliegpiet channel and you want to support me, please like this video and if you haven't already done that, please subscribe. I really appreciate that. See you all again next week. Don't forget to smash that Vliegpiet subscribe button, hit the bell icon and join the journey.